Today is a continuation of a motor wiring series I've been working on and uh, how you might manipulate these salvaged motors in order to operate homemade machines. So I've got a video on reversing the direction of rotation and the first one is about uh, starting from scratch how to wire a motor just to get it to run. In the very first one I show a lot of different types and so you can click on the link which will pop out right here if you want to go back and see the other types of motors. But in the first video, I didn't actually show you how to wire the DC motor. I just talked about it. I want to show you a couple different options. I'll also show you some other tools along the way that you may need. Let's start with the most basic and simple option, which is using a console that came with the treadmill. What you see here are a couple of components. Uh, this right here is a MC2100 speed controller. It comes in a lot of treadmills and as you can see on my blown up version it says MC2100WM. Uh, this particular speed controller doesn't have the potentiometer uh, tabs uh, on the speed controller. The reason that's significant is it means that you're going to need both the console and this in order to control the speed. And as you can see, this thing is quite large. I've already removed every component that I didn't need except the uh, part that actually interfaces with the speed control. What you'll end up with if you have this particular speed board is this guy, which is a transformer. And it drops the voltage from 115 down to 16 volts, but it's still AC. And that's needed for your speed controller board. The main idea would be to just preserve all the cables after they are because when you take it out of the machine, it's already going to be wired properly. But you'll also notice there are no buttons on this console. So that forced me to keep this guy as well. And so it looks kind of silly to have this hanging on a machine, but I actually did this for a while. So I will put a little video clip here of my scroll saw where you can see one of the first times I wired all this up and actually power my scroll saw um, using that motor right there. But eventually I moved away from that. This is really bulky and large and not really something that you want to, you want to have unless you don't care what your machine looks like. And for the most part, I don't usually care. But I was kind of tired of working with this large board. Now, one more thing, some treadmills come and come with a MC60 board instead of a MC2100. And so you'd see MC60 here. And that board would have three terminals about in this region, three little tabs. They're usually labeled P1, P2, and P3. And if you see that, then this is all you need is the, not this, but the MC60. It looks very similar to this. And you would need this and then you would need to purchase a potentiometer, which looks like this. It has three tabs. Uh, the center one is called the wiper. And so you would have low, wiper, and high. This particular one is a 10K potentiometer. Oh. On my lathe, I have a 5K potentiometer because that's what was required for the DC speed controller that's in that box. And I'll show you that a little later in the video. But again, with the MC60, you could use a uh, 5K potentiometer and um, that would allow you to just use the speed controller that comes with the treadmill. This is a uh, less attractive option, but uh, it definitely works and it costs nothing. The next option would be what I've been recommending in my videos up until this point, And that is using a transformer. Now, I'm gonna show you this method, and uh, I think it's great for testing purposes. This is something I do all the time, and this is typically how uh, I set things up when I find one of these things uh, discarded. Uh, the first thing I wanna do is make sure it works. So I will break out my auto transformer, which is what you're looking at here. Now that I'm here making this video, and getting ready to tell you that this is what you should do in order to run one of your machines. I uh, unfortunately am wanting to eat my words now because not only is this thing huge, but um, it costs about $100. And that's probably not practical if you're salvaging equipment 
you probably don't want to spend a hundred dollars to get your motor running um, you know that's that's a large percentage of what a new motor will cost so um, I'm going to show you this method because this is what I do all the time and then I'll move on to some other options that might even be cheaper and then I'll also show you the one that I think is uh, recommended with the auto transformer what this does is it varies the voltage so you would plug this into the wall and here in the US it's 120 volts and then this transformer can step up or step down the voltage for you as you can see on the scale this one says 0 to 130 but the scale is actually off a little bit on this side from here um, it actually scales up to about 150 volts as tested by my multimeter but you can get a voltage readout right here on the front so you know pretty much where you are all right my transformer is plugged in I'm going to clamp this motor down The next thing I need to tell you about is this guy. This is a full bridge rectifier. And what it does is it converts AC to DC. And if you look really closely, you can see here, it says AC on this side. But sometimes instead of saying AC, there's just a squiggly line there. It still means AC. And then this side has a plus sign, which is for the positive side of your motor. Now, these are wired diagonally across, so your AC will come in here and here. Now, those wires are often white and black, but because it's AC, it doesn't matter. Um, the direction of current is changing direction 60 times a second here in the US. And so if you switch those around, it's not a problem. On this side, you've got uh, the plus and minus for your DC out. So AC current in from the wall, DC current out across these two terminals here. All right, this guy here comes from a vacuum. I've attached these terminals on the end just to make it easy to use and plug in. And this vacuum was rated at 15 amps, so it should be good for our little test here. All right, doesn't matter which ones you put on which as long as you put it across the AC. So AC. So as far as your DC uh, terminals from your motor, the red is positive and the black is negative. And so you might be thinking, okay, well then I'm, I gotta plug my red into the positive. But actually what will happen is if you reverse these, the motor will spin the other direction. So it's not a big deal. Uh, it's not a right or wrong in this case. It's just about which direction you want the motor to rotate. All right, one more quick look for you just to make sure you got it. I'm gonna plug this right into my transformer. And you can see the motor. Let's see if I can get you in real close here. So right now the motor is spinning towards us or clockwise, but let me flip those terminals around for you. And now you can see it's spinning away, away from us or counterclockwise. Uh, one more thing I want to point out is that uh, people often recommend that you wire a capacitor in parallel with the motor here. Um, and that's a little bit outside of the scope of this video. It's not terribly difficult. It's not difficult at all, actually, to do, uh, to wire it in parallel. But I don't have a capacitor large enough, or at least I don't think I do. Uh, one person recommended that we use this capacitor. And in the comment section, they say, can't you just pull the capacitor off of here and use that one? But I'm a little bit concerned about this uh, 1500 microfarads. Uh, I don't know. Uh, everything that I've seen so far has said you need a really large capacitor, like 10,000 microfarads. Uh, I could be totally wrong. I haven't studied this enough. So I just want to say 
that uh, more research is required, so I'm not recommending this yet, that you pull this one off and use this. Since I never actually apply it this way anyway, uh, I'm not going to pursue this a whole lot. Uh, you're going to have to do some research on your own and confirm that this capacitor is sufficient uh, for this application. Okay, so I was thinking about this a great deal, about the fact that this thing cost 100 bucks, and um, you know that is 100 US dollars. And I started thinking, man, there is a, it's got to be a cheaper option, something that people can use. I am unfortunately going to have to eat my words here and um, show you something that I still can't believe I'm going to show you. Oh, okay. That's this guy. I am totally eating my words here, but I am only showing you this because this stupid thing is dirt cheap. All right, if you go to Harbor Freight with one of those little 25% coupons, it's like $15. And this is the Harbor Freight speed controller. The way it works, I used to think that this was a variable resistor, but then I actually opened it the other day, and that's where you really learn, right? When you take it apart. Um, there's a triac in here, and so that tells me that this actually works by flipping the circuit on and off. Uh, I've had nothing but trouble with every single one of these for us, so as far as uh, durability is concerned, you know, I am not recommending this. The first one I had, the knob broke off after about two months, and then it just quit working all together after about three or four months. And this one, for whatever reason, doesn't work at the bottom end. So from here till about here, it does nothing. And then the rest of it, it works. So that might be a calibration issue or something like that. I don't know, but the point is, I've had trouble with every single one of these things. Since I got this, I've been using this a lot less because I just don't need it. With all that being said, uh, the idea is pretty much the same. You would leave the rest of your circuit. I haven't changed anything there. We've got power. And can you see the motor? Yes. All right, here we go. Flip that on. I notice how far I've gone and I've got nothing, right? Let me move my hand because it's going to kick on here pretty soon. See where the dial is? hasn't hardly gone anywhere but it's back off so um, I'm only showing you this because it is ridiculously cheap there you go really cheap option not the one Jeremy told you to use <laughs> this guy comes from a lawnmower an electric lawnmower and when I recovered it, uh, the battery that was with it was a 24 volt battery, but I couldn't get it to charge. And so I'm assuming that's why the owner threw it away. It stopped charging. But of course the motor works. So here we are. The reason I'm showing you this is because at 24 volts, uh, you don't want to wire this directly through uh, something like this to the wall and run 120 volts for it. It's not designed to handle that. What I want to show you first uh, even at 12 volts, let's see if we can. Even with this um, marine grade 12 volt battery, which is about 13 volts when it's fully charged, you could power this motor at about half its rate of power. And the reason I've got this guy on the workbench is because I wanted to show you that a universal motor. will also run on DC power. So everything I'm showing you today for the DC motors will also work for this universal motor as far as getting it wired up and even controlling the speed. So we have this motor that we want to run at 24 volts and we've got 120 volts coming from the wall. What I would normally do is plug it into my auto transformer and dial it up to 24 volts. 
but um, as a DIYer and understanding that you guys like to make stuff for yourself and that's probably why you watch my videos right and that's why I've got this ugly thing on my desk on my workbench rather and this is a transformer that comes out of a microwave the way a transformer works is you run current through this coil of wire in the bottom and when electricity runs through a wire it produces a magnetic field around it if you get more and more coils that magnetic field gets stronger and stronger all right now here's an interesting thing that works in both directions so if you run current through a wire you get a magnetic field around it if there's a wire nearby the magnetic field induces a current in that wire so now this wire on top because it's sitting inside the magnetic field produced by the one on the bottom now that one on the top has a current flowing through it and so if you have AC current flowing down here you're going to have a similar uh, AC current here up at the top um, similar in that that in in the fact that it's AC now here's what makes the transformer so useful is you can adjust the output voltage by the number of coils let's say that there were 100 coils down here on the bottom and 120 volts if I do half the coils on the top then I'm going to get half the voltage I'll have 60 volts uh, AC on this top coil here and so you just take those two wires and whatever you wire across those two will be operated at 60 volts and so it's literally about the relationship between the two and you would use that in order to get the 24 volts that you want use that principle so the idea is pretty simple I'm not going to show it in this video because I haven't actually done it but uh, I recommend that you do a quick search on YouTube or online and you can find lots of resources where people will show you step by step how to do this but the idea is that you're going to cut this uh, carefully with a, uh, a grinder so that you could separate this this side piece here you can dig out that top coil and put in a coil of wire that you've twisted yourself the appropriate number of times sandwich it back in there nice and tight and then um, you know reseal this back up um, you could probably do that with maybe an epoxy or something if you can't weld but the idea of this is really simple and it would make it so that you could get the 24 volts that you need so that's a cheap DIY option that costs almost nothing and uh, maybe you'd have to buy some wire but again I've taken that out of a microwave and I see them all the time so let's move on to the option I like the most so here you see the motor that's powering my lathe all right I know you see a lot of wires here but don't get nervous it's not too bad this is a KB DC speed controller and let me show you the label um, that's kind of hard to see so I'll put the label on the screen right up here at the top I've got this wired so that I can control it with these three wires using my potentiometer that that's wired to the front of the lathe and there are a couple other things that I want to show you here um, the point of this video is not to show you how the wire is because this comes with a nice wiring diagram that's really easy to follow in fact if I can uh, I'll put a picture right here to show you that because um, it's so simple uh, I don't want to say anything that might potentially be different from what's actually in the manual that comes with it so it does come with instructions and it's very easy to follow so the things that I've added that I want to show you is this little PC fan I've got here you can also buy heat sinks that comes with these and that increases the rate of power that this can handle uh, I am right now experimenting with the fan I have pushed the lathe pretty hard and checked the temperature on it just to make sure it's staying cool and that seems to be working but I recommend you go ahead and buy the heat sink that comes with this uh, to just to be sure that you can get the full uh, rate of power out of this device over here in the corner you see a little wall adapter that everybody's familiar with we use these to charge our cell phones and things like that and this one I don't remember what it was a charger for or something that I lost but you can see there's this electrical tape wrapped around the terminals and so literally this is wired to the uh, main wire coming in and it's also wired across the switch so when I flip the switch on on my lathe in fact I'll show you
you can see and I think you can hear the fan blowing. So I use that to cool the DC speed controller and it's powered through this little terminal which is just uh, mounted here on the side of the box. All the wires run up over this platform here and then they go into the body of the lathe. I've got this switch here on the side and I'm gonna take that off because I actually think I should show you that. So this is a reversing switch. It's uh, specifically, it's a maintained reversing switch. Uh, there are two types. There's one that's uh, like a momentary switch. You might see something like that on a winch where you push it and it's got kind of a spring action underneath. So while you're holding it, the winch is moving. And when you let go, uh, it stops and the switch flips back to off. This one, when you flip the switch, it stays. And so you want to be certain that it's the maintained uh, sometimes I think it says sustain switch, um, but maintain is what you want, not the other one. You've got four leads here on the back. Two of these are for your motor, and the other two go to your power supply. In this case, my other two are going to, these two are going to my speed controller, and these two are wired across my motor. If you reverse those, it's no big deal. Just be sure that you've got them paired correctly. You could put your two motor leads here, and the two leads go into your speed controller here. But uh, this thing allows me to run my lathe both in forward and reverse without having to dig everything out and do what you saw in part two of this series about reversing the, the direction of rotation. One last technical note for you here. Uh, if I have missed anything or made a mistake or some technical detail, um, I do strive to give information that's accurate. So uh, I will start adding notes to the description if I find that after I've published a video that there was some error or so, some omission that I may have made. So be sure to check the description for anything that might be missing from the video, things that I thought were worth adding because you just can't do that after the fact. Leave me a comment. Let me know if you have any questions down below. And uh, if you found this video helpful, be sure to give it a thumbs up because that gives other people confidence that the material here is good and that it's, it's worth their time to watch it because it's not exactly a short video. But hopefully you have found this to be uh, a concise and helpful tutorial. So thank you.